There are real reasons to be concerned about a possible recession. And remember, a recession is not a crisis. A recession is normal, but a sitting president doesn't necessarily want to be running for re-election during a recession. So let's look at one of those reasons. More than 30 central banks around the world have cut interest rates this year. Why does that matter? Well, the last time we saw that many rate cuts worldwide was during the financial crisis of 08. We currently have nine countries potentially facing recession right now. In a global economy, that's an issue. Our own Federal Reserve lowered its rate by a quarter point last month to try and extend economic growth here at home, despite the slow growth worldwide and the harm done by the president's trade war. But typically, the Fed cuts rates as a last resort when the economy is in much worse shape than it appears to be right now. And using rate cuts now could mean that they're not available when we really need them. It could also mean that the economy will be simply immune to their impact. And yet the White House continues to call for the Fed to lower rates even further. But that message could be doing more harm than good. U.S. consumer sentiment actually fell in August. And according to the director of the survey, the cut actually made people more worried about a possible recession. People are confused. I have a great group here with me to help clear some of that confusion up. Phil Rucker, White House bureau chief for The Washington Post. Neil Irwin, senior economics correspondent for The New York Times. And Mikey Sherrill, Democratic congresswoman from my home state of New Jersey. Congresswoman, I turn to you first. The president knows the economy is his ticket to re-election. Is there any reason to believe he is going to give Americans a more accurate picture of the economy and do something about it? If you're running for office, if you're a private citizen, which he was last time around, you can paint whatever picture you want to help yourself get re-elected. But he's currently governing our nation, interfacing with world leaders every day. If he's not being honest about the state that we're in, what does that do to us? Well, I think many Americans know what state we're in. In fact, in my home state, New Jersey, as you well know, uh, many of the economic moves made by this administration have been incredibly harmful to us. New Jersey was worst hit by uh, the tax reform than any other state in the nation. The state and local tax deduction cap has been hurting teachers and cops throughout my district. We see the failure to invest in our infrastructure further harming our district and our state, a state that, oh, by the way, is part of the 20% of the American economy. So, you know, these hits, these, these were self-inflicted wounds. Um, and the president, furthermore, continues to do that in the global economy. I don't think people quite understand what the plan is um, for these Chinese tariffs. Uh, this tariff war has been really hard for corporations in my district who are trying hard to plan for the next five years, the next 10 years, the next 15 years, and are finding themselves unable to do so. And then the president says, well, he's not going to do the tariff war until after Christmas because he knows it's another tax on consumers. And so we see him holding off until after Christmas for some of this, this trade war, um, which makes it seem like it's just some partisan maneuvering and not really helpful to our economy. Phil, I want to play part of your exchange with the president yesterday while he was in New Jersey talking about how the American people are so happy and spending when we know from the congresswoman people in New Jersey did not benefit. Take a look. A lot of economists say that you should be preparing for a recession, that no president is immune from a recession, and that it's malpractice for the government not to be doing something. Yeah, I, Phil, honestly, I'm prepared for everything. I don't think we're having a recession. We're doing tremendously well. Our consumers are rich. I gave a tremendous tax cut, and they're loaded up with money. Uh, they're buying. I saw the Walmart numbers. They were through the roof just two days ago. Uh, that's better than any poll. That's better than any economist. And most economists actually say, Phil, that we're not going to have a recession. Most of them are saying we're not going to have a recession. So the president said Walmart numbers were through the roof. He didn't say the day before that Macy's numbers were in the toilet. When he says consumers yeah. are flushed with cash and spending, it wasn't a tax cut for the average American. It was a corporate tax cut. So what's your takeaway from what he said? Well, what you just said there, Steph, is exactly right. And, and what Trump is trying to do is project confidence to the American people that there's not going to be a recession and, and that he's got everything under control. But that uh, flies in the face of the data we're seeing and the indicators and the big yellow flags, especially last week. Uh, you know, no president is immune from a recession. Uh, president Trump is not immune from a recession. And, you know, talking to economists, I interviewed Larry Summers last week, the former Treasury Secretary uh, and economic advisor. 
advisor who helped guide the Obama administration out of the Great Recession, and he said it was effectively malpractice for this government not to be preparing contingencies, not to be getting ready for a recession if one were to come. Neil, you wrote an excellent piece about how a recession could happen. Uh, and again, it would be normal. We have been in a 10-year economic expansion, so a recession is par for the course. And the president has already given a massive corporate tax cut. And still, with GDP only 2.1 percent, that is far below his 3 percent uh, projection, though he projected 4, 5, and 6 percent. After hearing the president and his advisors saying, I don't see a recession anywhere, do you believe they're recognizing the risks that at least you and many others have laid out? Uh, no, they seem to be uh, kind of wanting to stick their fingers in their ears and, and pretend that these signs aren't out there. Uh, look, we've, we've seen this before. It doesn't have to be a recession for this to be a very dangerous moment for the economy. In uh, late 2015, early 2016, there was something very similar to this. There was an industrial slowdown caused by overseas forces, especially China. Uh, it may have uh, helped Trump uh, get elected, may have cost uh, Hillary Clinton the White House. Uh, you could have something like that, that this time that doesn't become an actual technical recession, but really does a lot of damage in the industrial heartland across the U.S. But can Democrats, Congresswoman, actually capitalize on this? I want to share what the president said at a rally last week. See, the bottom line is, I know you like me, and this room is a love fest, I know that. But you have no choice but to vote for me, because your 401ks, down the tubes, everything's going to be down the tubes. So whether you love me or hate me, you got to vote for me. And this is the argument he keeps making. And you see, the new Wall Street Journal poll says that 49 percent of Americans still approve of his handling of the economy. You just walked us through how there's been mishandling of the economy. Why aren't Democrats seizing on this? When Joe Biden talks about the need uh, for moral leadership, the president responds by saying, you want morality or you want your money? And there are people who might not say it at dinner parties, but when they go home, they start to say, I need to protect my 401k, and they believe it. Well, I think if you want morality and you want good fiscal leadership, you want a Democrat in the White House. Because what we're seeing in New Jersey, and it's interesting that you just played that clip from Morristown, that's in my district. I wish the president had left the airstrip and gone to talk to people in my district because he would realize the economic harm he's doing across the country um, to people when they, you know, they do have jobs. We do have employment, but people aren't receiving the paychecks that they were. Then why years does he ago. have such a high approval rating when it comes to how he handles the economy? I think we're starting to see the cracks in that. I think this is where some of his bad fiscal policies, some of his chaotic policies, the rubber's meeting the road now. It's taken a while. Um, it takes a while, as, as I think um, a commentator said earlier uh, uh, this morning, you know, when you're, when you're moving a ship, it takes a little bit of time to, for the results to be felt when you move the rudder. We're starting to feel the results of his policies now. So let's uh, go with a little palace intrigue. You and I both know from our own reporting that the president's advisors look go to great lengths to find articles and data to please the president, to support his point of view. How dangerous is it right now that that is continuing to be the case? And when the president looks at data that he doesn't like, he's now claiming it's being manipulated. Yeah, well, that's spot on, Steph. Uh, my reporting last week shows that Larry Kudlow, the economic advisor in the White House, has been presenting a fairly sunny uh, outlook about the economy to the president, showing him good data, trying to explain to him why he doesn't think a recession is in the offing. And it conflicts with, of course, what the president is consuming on television and what he's reading in newspapers. And the president has been telling friends uh, that he thinks there's a conspiracy at play here, that he thinks the news media is pumping up the idea of a recession using faulty data and, importantly, that he doesn't believe all the economic statistics he sees because he thinks economists are elites and are out to get him and are using an anti-Trump bias with their numbers to try to derail his re-election hopes. Paul Singer, massive Republican who runs Elliott Management just last week, warning of a huge economic slowdown. Neil, I want to talk about the team surrounding the president. Peter Navarro, Larry Kudlow, Steve Mnuchin. The Washington Post ran multiple op-eds this weekend calling them men without a plan. Give us a bit of historical perspective. Uh, uh, I had a guest last week who said that Presidents Obama and Bush uh, in times of crises were surrounded by NBA all-star teams. And President Trump has got the Harlem Globetrotters. 
Yeah, you have an unusual moment where it's not just that uh, those three leaders are not as tested and not as experienced with kind of the, the mechanisms of government and how you use those to try and uh, try and deal with economic challenges. Uh, it's also that the, the level under them is understaffed. If you go to Treasury, if you go to the White House, a lot of those kind of mid-level jobs are not as well staffed as they have in the past. Look, wh whatever you think of the Bush administration, when the crisis happened in 2007, 2008, they kind of cast ideology aside. They did some bailouts that, that you know they didn't like doing. Uh, they did some fiscal stimulus that they didn't like doing, but they saw damage and risk to the economy, and they pulled those triggers. They did those things. Uh, I think the question is, is this administration, if things do take a turn for the worse, are they going to be that open-minded, or are they going to kind of uh, try and be in denial? Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me, or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.